The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everyone. My name is Lamar Baxter. I am the Director of Business Development for AccuPlan Benefit Services. I'd like to thank everyone for joining us on today's webinar. Uh, we have some great information to cover today. Uh, today's topic will be covering the use of a self-directed IRA and a checkbook LLC. Basically, what we'll be covering today is how you actually will take advantage of using an LLC in conjunction with a self-directed IRA or 401k. Today's guest speaker would be Mr. Jeffrey Hare, a renowned attorney from San Jose, California, who I've had the pleasure to work with over the last five years, forming LLCs for uh, many of my clients who have both self-directed IRAs as well as 401ks. Uh, Jeffrey has an ex extensive background in real estate investing as well as a real estate attorney, so a lot of information that we'll be covering today really kind of ties into his background, and I know the information that he'll be covering today will be of great benefit to you. Uh, just what we'll be covering today, the benefits checkbook control using an IRA-owned LLC. We'll be covering asset protection with the LLC, establishing an LLC, what's required to establish an LLC, what is an IRA in terms of an individual retirement account as well as a 401k, we'll be covering that, traditional investments versus alternative investments, the rules against prohibited transactions, disqualified persons, and how to invest with your IRA as, along with the IRA-owned LLC. We'll also be covering the pros and cons of using a self-directed IRA, uh, whether it be using it with a self-directed IRA alone or with the IRA-owned LLC. Before we get started, just kind of give you an idea uh, which direction we're going to go. The actual presentation will be muted. You will have the ability to ask questions, and which we'll take those questions at the end of the presentation. Uh, we'll go ahead and start and have Mr. Jeffrey Hill take off with the actual presentation, and then I'll cover a brief summary in terms of how to use a self-directed IRA, what's required in terms of setting up the IRA in order to get the information over to someone like a Jeffrey Hare to get the LLC established. Uh, as, as mentioned, the Q&A session will be towards the last portion of the presentation. So uh, before we get started, I'm going to cover our disclaimer because once again, our objective is to really just to provide education and information. And hopefully you're taking this information and taking along to your uh, whether it be your tax professional, legal professional, or financial professional. So once again, our objective is not to steer you towards any investment, but really to provide you education on how to use certain tools such as the self-directed IRA in conjunction with the IRA-owned LLC. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and turn this over to Mr. Jeffrey Hare. So I'll go ahead and click over to him. So Jeffrey, go ahead and take it away. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah, I appreciate that. Um, trying to make sure we can get the uh, screen up here. Um, Okay, I'm going to bring my screen up. Hello, everybody. I'm Jeffrey Hare. I'm a uh, uh, real estate attorney uh, for the past uh, uh, about 28 years, I think, is what I've uh, calculated. And um, it's, uh, it's been focused primarily on land use and real estate matters. Most recently, I've gotten involved in uh, helping real estate investors to get started and uh, put together deals. Um, Today I'm going to be uh, covering uh, the specific topic of how you can take your self-directed IRA and use checkbook control or checkbook IRA LLCs as we uh, set them up uh, to help the transaction. Um, I also have a disclaimer, which is a caveat here. Um, and uh, the caveat is basically this is for educational purposes only. Uh, please do not take anything that we're saying here as a, a uh, legal or investment advice. Um, I also want to make the comment, self-directed IRAs are really not for everyone or for every situation. Um, there are some circumstances with the self-directed IRAs <clears throat> that will not be compatible with your investment objectives. And a good example of that, uh, I get asked a lot, can we buy a house for, for my parents? Or can we buy a, a place for my kid to live in while he's going to college? Uh, it would be otherwise a great investment, but you can't do those with your IRA. So you have to make sure that you're, when you're using your IRA, you're using it properly. And in order to get through that process and to avoid problems, we uh, suggest that you always consult with a qualified tax, legal, and financial planning professional. All right, the question before us today is, uh, why use a checkbook LLC or your self-directed IRA? Um, 
a self-directed IRA, as you know if you've listened to Lamar talk about the advantages of the self-directed IRA, is that you take control of your retirement funds. It allows you to invest in a wide range of investments. We primarily focus on real estate, but there are a wide range of other opportunities available to you to invest your self-directed IRA. The Checkbook LLC is a tool that you can use to give you even greater control over that part of the transaction. With greater control comes greater responsibility, however. Um, Checkbook LLCs are not for everyone. They do require an understanding of how to manage an account and how to take care of a business, and you need to understand some basic fundamental rules. Um, I also at the same time want to make it very clear. The LLC is not required. You can use your self-directed IRA to invest in a wide range of opportunities without the LLC. The LLC, though, does have certain advantages and disadvantages. So let's talk about the checkbook LLC. First of all, how does it work? You start first and foremost, and you'll hear me say this a couple of times, but it's very important, you start by setting up a self-directed IRA account. Now, it's either through a rollover or by starting one from scratch, but you want to set up an IRA account first and foremost before you do anything else. This is your pension plan. It's sometimes referred to as just the plan, and sometimes we call it just the self-directed IRA. Next, you set up you, you set up the LLC. Now, this is where you establish a, uh, the limited liability company, and I'll explain what an LLC is in a minute. So you have your plan and you have your LLC. Once you've set those both up, you transfer the funds to the LLC. This is an investment. You're directing the investment of your IRA plan into a LLC. And as the manager of the LLC, you now can control the funds. Some people don't know what an LLC is. They've heard the term probably, so let me explain briefly what that is. A limited liability company, it's uh, about, became popular um, about 1970. It's a relatively recent formation, um, and in some states they are still expanding the use of it. Um, limited liability companies uh, were formed as a sort of hybrid legal entity. Uh, they combine the liability protection that you used to get with corporations with the tax advantages of the partnership. You can have one or more members of the LLC. In fact, you can have an unlimited number of members in an LLC. Um, LLCs are creatures of state formation, so they're subject to state laws, and they're also subject to some federal regulations. So what is a checkbook? IRA LLC. I'm going to explain what it is and what it is not. I'm going to talk a little bit about the specific advantages and disadvantages of the checkbook IRA LLC, and I'm going to explain how you set one up. First of all, what it is. Okay, um, It is a separate legal entity that is funded in whole or in part by your IRA. It allows you to combine your IRA accounts for greater purchasing power. For example, let's say a husband and wife each have an, a separate IRA and they want to invest in real estate. Now there's some problems that can come up because they are considered what we call disqualified persons if they try to do any transactions with each other. But they can combine both of their IRA accounts together into an LLC and then by combining their funds they can then in turn use that IRA LLC to purchase real estate you can see that can give them greater flexibility and more money to go and invest. It's an effective mechanism to manage your investment. You, by having an LLC account, you have a nice little tracking system and an accounting system for keeping track of your investment. What is an LLC not? It's not a way to avoid making poor investment decisions. It's not a game or a hobby. It is a business. In other words, just because you set up the LLC doesn't mean you can go willy-nilly and just buy real estate. You still have to do your due diligence. You have to make sure that your investment strategy is, is sound. And um, I'll be mentioning a little bit more about some due diligence. 
But it's also very important to understand that the same rules that govern your uh, IRA, whether it's with a company you're currently employed with or whether it's a self-directed IRA with AccuPlan, apply to the LLC that you set up. In other words, you cannot get involved in any prohibited transactions. Uh, you must follow the rules and keep good records. Now, the primary advantages uh, of having a checkbook LLC is that it allows you the faster transfer of funds. Uh, because you're the person writing the checks, you can respond to a transaction or uh, get involved in a deal without having to go through the full level of compliance review. Hopefully you will do your own compliance review, but it probably could save you two or three days of turnaround time if you're trying to close an escrow. It also simplifies investment transactions. Um, I had a client who was doing some oil and gas leases and the private placement memorandums and the issuer documents were rather extensive. It would have taken a good week even for the best of the uh, IRA custodians out there to go through them all. Um, and he was quite qualified to, to review them himself and make the transactions. It puts you in control of your self-directed IRA funds. Now some of the disadvantages. First of all, obviously you have setup costs. It's a cost of doing business. You need to uh, set up the LLC and you need to pay to have that done structure, set up properly. You have to have a special operating agreement. Uh, you're going to be having to pay annual state fees and taxes, uh, by the way, which you can pay out of your, uh, your IRA money. But you can just keep in mind it's a business. You need to manage it properly. How to set up the checkbook LLC? Well, again, remember step one is always open a self-directed IRA account. And you have to make sure that the company that you're setting this up with allows you to use checkbook LLCs for your investment goals. Some of these don't. AccuPlan does, and, um, but if you, before you go running around looking at some other uh, companies, make sure that the company that you're going to be setting up your self-directed IRA with allows you to have a checkbook LLC. Second, consult with a professional, a CPA, attorney who is knowledgeable about IRA LLCs. Do not use internet templates. There are several of the IRA, excuse me, there are several internet templates out there for setting up LLCs that will not work for your uh, self-directed IRA. In fact, they create an automatic prohibited transaction in a couple of the formats that I've seen. Again, important, open your IRA account first. This process normally takes seven to 10 days to roll funds over from, let's say, a Fidelity, a Schwab, or A.G. Edwards account into, uh, let's say, AccuPlan. Um, once you've opened the account, they, you file the, start the process of the paperwork to move the funds over. Uh, it can take up to a month in some cases, uh, so you need to keep that in mind. Allow some time. Never, never put up personal cash for a down payment. The funds must be in the plan account before you can invest. Um, a lot of times uh, we have situations where someone will call up and they say, um, I saw the investment deal of a century. It's, it's the great deal. I put down a personal check for $10,000 uh, for the deposit and I want to pay the balance with my IRA. And uh, we, that is a prohibited transaction. And it's a very, very difficult uh, uh, problem because you lose the deal and uh, you may or may not even get that deposit back. What you want to do is have that fund ready to go, then go start looking for the property and you'll be ready to go because you can make that deposit using your IRA money if you're set up. Again, keep in mind that time it takes for the funds to roll over and set up minimum of about seven days. Uh, it could take as long as a month, especially if your mon money has not been liquidated and is still in mutual funds. Okay, uh, what are some of the unique applications for checkbook LLCs that, uh, the, uh, that from my experience, from my client's experience, uh, foreclosure sales, a very good example. If you're trying to do foreclosure sales, uh, having the, the cashier's checks is uh, at the courthouse steps ready to go is very important. So if your funds are in a self-directed checkbook LLC, uh, you can create the funds ready to go. 
uh, have them and have them ready to present uh, and close that deal. Uh, you can make private loans for your uh, buddies that are doing rehabs and flips. They often need short-term six-month or one-year loans. Uh, you can just go ahead and, and take a, a note and deed of trust and uh, loan them the money for a year and make a very nice return. What's coming up, uh, we've talked a little bit about this, um, and uh, we're looking for what's been called crowdfunding. Now, the JOBS Act, which is uh, an acronym for Jumpstart Our Business uh, Startups, uh, was passed by Congress overwhelmingly in 2010. And we're waiting for the Security and Exchange Commission to uh, create some uh, rules and regulations that will allow you to invest your money into businesses and into real estate and other similar ventures. Uh, there's lots of rules that are going to be coming in, but it's going to be, an, uh, we think, an ideal opportunity for you to use your IRA to make some investments. Um, you'll be able to, uh, the other unique application, as I mentioned, one is the ability to combine IRA accounts for greater investment opportunities. Let's say two or three people get together. Um, they don't have a lot of cash, but each of them has an IRA. They can set up an LLC, combine them together. That LLC can then go out and invest money. As always, you want to avoid problems. Getting Solving problems after they've occurred is always an expensive process. Uh, as a lawyer, I see the uh, unfortunate uh, consequences of people who have uh, started a process and then they come to me to try to unravel it. Um, I always try to get my clients to think about avoiding them in the first place. First one, of course, is to plan ahead. Uh, one thing unique to the IRA, uh, self-directed IRA, is that all of the funds for your transaction, with, with a couple of exceptions, all of the funds must come from the IRA. You need to plan for contingencies. You need to plan for emergencies. So, for example, if you're purchasing a property um, and you need to come up with a couple hundred thousand dollars to do that, um, and then the purchase price is, let's say, $200,000, and you have uh, $200,000 in your IRA, you have no money left for, let's say, closing costs or that new water heater or even the pay for the property inspection. Uh, you want to have a little extra money in that account so that you can cover all of your uh, you know, emergencies and those uh, contingencies. After you start getting rental money back, you'll start to build some money funds back into the account for that purpose. Um, due diligence, always. Again, do your due diligence. We'll talk a little bit more about that. But consulting with professionals uh, a little bit is worth uh, every dollar you're going to spend on that. <clears throat> a lot of times, people with the Checkbook LLC, um, they ask questions, for example, what state should I use? And it's, uh, uh, it's always important to understand this. It's always the state in which you're doing business at a minimum. Okay, You need to consider that. If you're setting up an LLC, the LLC must be registered in the state in which you are doing business. What does that mean? If you are a landlord and you are renting property to a tenant, you are doing business and you must register your LLC. So if you set up a California LLC uh, and you buy some property and then you decide later on you want to buy some property in, in Texas or, or, or uh, Arkansas or wherever you want to invest, um, a lot of people are investing in North Dakota now because the oil and gas industry is uh, picking up. You have to register the, your LLC in that state. It's not expensive, but you have to do it. How much money to put in? Well, I've, I've mentioned you need to have enough for funding uh, the transaction. If you're going to borrow money, um, can you do that? Yes, you can borrow money using your IRA. Uh, and if you have a checkbook LLC, the same rules apply. You can borrow money. Um, but you need to have enough money to handle the transaction plus contingencies. Uh, can you combine IRA funds? Let's say you have a Roth account and a traditional IRA. Can you combine those? Yes, you can. And uh, you, that would be two separate accounts in the LLC. Um, you combine it with your IRAs of your spouses, your children. Um, you can do that uh, in the LLC. Uh, how many LLCs? Uh, this is kind of a question that comes up from people that have attended an, uh, an asset protection seminar somewhere. 
And the uh, question is, you know, what's the ideal number? Well, there's, there's trade-offs, uh, for example. Yes, if you uh, are purchasing 10 properties, uh, you could put each property into a separate LLC, but uh, it may be uh, cost negative for that because you do have annual fees uh, and taxes to pay for each of the LLCs that you set up. But um, you could put two or three properties into one LLC and another set of properties in another one. Uh, that's a discussion you should have with your planner and your CPA and the attorney, and uh, it, each circumstance is a little different. Dil diligence, it never goes away. You really have to be careful. You're talking about your retirement plan. And, um, you know, people make mistakes all the time. And you want to be very careful that, to realize that even though this source of funds called your pension plan seems like a big chunk of money sitting there, um, it, is, it could be lost. And uh, you have to be careful. You need to protect your plan funds so you have them when you retire. Due diligence fundamentals apply. In other words, you want to check out the property. You want to make sure that the people are involved. You want to have everything in writing, just like any other transaction, any other investment you were doing, that you would be doing. The rules would apply if you're using a self-directed IRA. Every transaction involves risk. Risk is equates to a nice return, so you want to make sure that you, you know, don't run away from it but some people have a higher risk tolerance level than others. You can manage this risk, you can never eliminate it. And be really clear on that. So the steps that you would take in an ordinary investment using your own cash should be the same that you take with your IRA, so you protect it. I want to make a couple of brief comments here. Um, we're, we're doing okay on, on the time, and that is the key elements of safe and sane asset protection. I know a lot of people spend a lot of money going to seminars to learn about asset protection, and I think that the, uh, you know, I've seen people spend thousands of dollars uh, on asset protection books and CDs and seminars, and, um, I, and they have no money left to invest in assets. Um, first of all, and this is a key element of your self-directed IRA investing, and it applies as well to the checkbook LLC, is you want to have competent property management. Uh, good property management can help you in so many ways, uh, even from the beginning of just identifying of potential investment properties. Um, some people come to me and they say, I want to use my IRA to invest, but I'm going to, I'm going to manage the property myself. Um, there's ways to do that that are possible, but you should be looking at all investments using your IRA as an arm's length transaction. You're not allowed to put in sweat equity, uh, go out there and start doing work on the house. You're not allowed to go in and start painting and mowing the lawn and doing all these other things that landlords generally have to do to keep up the property. You need to show that you're having this done on an arm's length transaction. And a good property manager is just that. Second, get adequate insurance. Just because you have your money using a self-directed IRA uh, to invest doesn't eliminate the need to have insurance coverage. Insurance coverage can help you in so many ways. And again, if you get in trouble, you get sued, your insurance company will be your first line of defense and often the last line of defense. 99% of all cases settle before they go to trial and it's usually because the insurance company has been very good about negotiating a settlement to get rid of any liability. Again, uh, consulting with a tax or legal professional can give you help with these on how to avoid some of the problems of safe and sane asset protection. But whatever you do, um, if somebody's selling you a uh, ironclad program for asset protection and it's costing thousands of dollars, um, you should, a red flag should go up and say, is this really necessary? Don't make it so complicated that you can't um, understand it. And most importantly, of course, save some money so you can invest in assets. I want to summarize, because I know we're going to have hopefully some time for questions, but the self-directed IRA allows you to really diversify and control your retirement investment. and 
I really encourage people to take a close look at it if you haven't done so already, to use the self-directed IRA as a vehicle to control your, uh, your pension funds. Second, the checkbook LLC allows you to take that level of control one step further. I want you to also consider the advantages and disadvantages as they apply to your investment objectives. Um, some to, each case is going to be a little bit different. Most importantly, I do encourage you to take control of your IRA and to invest for your future. Uh, it's a great vehicle and I think we're going to see more and more people uh, using the self-directed IRA as it becomes more popular, as more famous people uh, are, are known to have been using them. And uh, Congress is going to probably be trending towards loosening up the rules even more for allowing people to use, uh, to invest their money. And as soon as we see the crowdfunding uh, regulations come out, we're going to see more and more people wanting to use their IRAs uh, to invest. Um, I just put up my slide here with my name and contact information in case you need to get a hold of me. And I'll turn it back to Lamar at this point because I'd like to be able to answer specific questions. And I know Lamar is going to cover things. Okay, thanks a lot, Jeff. And Jeff, as usual, covers a lot of important information. We have a series of questions already coming in, in which I'm going to go ahead and kind of tie things together in terms of how the self-directed IRA needs to be set up. Or when I when I say self-directed IRA, I mean self-directed IRA as well as 401ks. Uh, we use the term IRA-owned LLC, but the 401k also can be used if that's for your self-employed or 1099 to be able to use the checkbook control feature. Uh, so with that being said, let me go ahead and. Um, for those who actually join onto the presentation late, um, we are recording this actual webinar. So within the next couple of days after the webinar, we'll be sending out a playback link uh, for those to um, play back at their leisure, as well as to pass along to others who may be interested in this topic. Um, I'm going to go over my disclosure once, once again for those uh, who had actually joined the webinar late, because once again, our objective here is to provide information and education is not to steer you towards setting up an LLC or, or any of the other investment is really to let you know what options you have when it comes to using a self-directed IRA or 401k. So as I mentioned earlier, um, be sure to consult with, as Jeffrey mentioned also in his disclaimer, you definitely want to consult with your tax professional, legal professional, as well as any other financial professionals that you have on your team to aid you in making the best decision uh, possible for you. As he mentioned, the checkbook IRA, as with the self-directed IRA, is not for everyone. It is something that you definitely want to make sure that you have the education or are in a position to obtain the education as you move forward. I've seen a lot of people make mistakes attempting to just kind of make it up as they go along. Unfortunately, we're not set up as a custodian as, let's say, a Charles Schwab or Franklin Templeton to where we are giving you any type of advice. So it's really important that you perform your due diligence on the investment, the structure, and whatnot to make sure that you're following all of the IRS rules. So I'm just going to give you a real brief summary on AccuPlan, and then we're going to talk about how the self-directed IRA or 401k should be set up, what your options are in terms of account types to be able to transfer funds out of these account types over to the checkbook LLC. We're a national company providing uh, self-directed administration and custodial services for both IRA and 401ks. We provi uh, pro pride ourselves on expertise, low cost, and quick service for self-directed IRAs and 401ks. We maintain a legal staff with expertise in both tax legal as well as uh, retirement account expertise. Once again, we don't give advice, but we do have our team in place to make sure that any transaction that cross our desk are IRS compliant. So our job not to give you advice, but to make sure any transaction that we authorize or sign off on is IRS compliant. Uh, prohibited transactions, this is really an important aspect of setting up a checkbook LLC. These are the rules that you must follow. As Jeffrey mentioned earlier, that it's important that once you set up the checkbook LLC that you're not immune from prohibited transaction rules or disqualified person rules. These rules still must be followed. The only difference is that we as a custodian will not be overseeing any transaction. We will not be signing off on any transaction. So it's really important that you understand the rules. If you're going to take on the task of becoming the manager of that LLC and taking over the uh, overseeing of the transactions as on a daily basis. 
So for example, an IRA cannot engage in any transaction, direct or indirect, with anybody or anything considered related to the IRA. So there is a direct and indirect rule, meaning that uh, if you were to, for example, set up the LLC and you were looking to loan money uh, to your spouse, with or without an LLC, that is considered a prohibited transaction. Next question usually will come up, well, can I loan to my spouse's son? Oh, this is where the indirect rule comes in because we'll talk about this in another in the upcoming slide in terms of who's considered disqualified person. So even though your objective is to, for example, to loan money to your spouse's son, because first of all, your son is also her son is also considered a disqualified person. It is still considered a disqualified transaction. And some may think, well, why am I bringing this up? Because these are some of the should I say it's some of the loopholes or tricks that some try to penetrate, assuming that because no one's overseeing the transaction because they're the member or the manager of the LLC, that these are transactions that they can get away with. Keep in mind the IRS is already under the assumption that most people are setting up checkbook LLCs to avoid certain internal revenue code uh, prohibited transaction rules. So automatically, it, could be subject to any type of audit. So the main, the main thing is to make sure that you're keeping accurate books, making sure that you have detailed records on monies going in as well as the monies going out of the uh, IRA or so say the LLC, and you shouldn't have any problems. Uh, selling and exchanging or leasing property would be also uh, considered a uh, we call it prohibited transaction, and that would be as it relates to selling or exchanging leasing property to any disqualified person, lending money or extending credit, furnishing goods and services or facilities. And what do we mean by services and facilities? For example, you may have a situation so where someone is self-employed and they want to conduct business with their, biz uh, with their existing organization. There is a yes and no answer as to whether you directly or indirectly using an IRA or an IRA-owned LLC conduct business with that business. The rule is that as long as that business that you have an interest in, your interest does not, including your spouse, does not exceed 49% is considered a permissible transaction. However, some would think that, well, if I go through a self-directed IRA with the LLC, who's to oversee whether um, I own 49% or more in that, in that entity. Well, usually if an audit is conducted, um, that's usually where everything will come to light in terms of what's going on within that LLC. So really no self-dealing uh, self and no personal use of any assets held within the IRA-owned LLC. So disqualified person, so this is something that you want to pay attention to. Once again, if you're going to become the managing member of the LLC, identifying and knowing who disqualified persons are, and that would be you, your spouse, parent, grandparent, children, or grandchildren, and any of their lineal and ascendants and descendants, including their spouses, would be considered disqualified persons, persons that you cannot do business with directly or indirectly using an IRA or a self-directed IRA-owned IRA LLC. Anyone providing services to your IRA is considered a prohibited party or disqualified person. So, uh, for example, you may have uh, a property manager. Uh, anyone providing usually that has any type of fiduciary or I would say any decision-making powers over your finances would be considered a disqualified person. And there are some gray areas, and this is where you definitely want to consult with myself or with your tax professional before you put your transaction together and move forward. Even though you're going to be more likely moving forward with these transactions within your LLC, I'm still going to be here to answer any questions that you may have as it relates to structure to make sure that you're putting together compliant transactions. Um, I'm here only if you pick up the phone or email me in terms of getting information. The worst thing you want to do is to commit a prohibited transaction and then try to unwind it because a lot of times the minute that it's discovered, as a custodian, we have a responsibility to report it to the IRS. So the main objective is to never commit a prohibited transaction. It's better to ask questions than to assume, and then assuming that you can reverse it later, because the rule is once to commit it, the prohibited transaction is committed, your account becomes disqualified. Not just that transaction, but that entire account becomes disqualified, which means taxation as well as penalties, which pretty much can wipe your account out. As I mentioned earlier, corporations, partnerships, trusts, estates in which you own directly or indirectly, where you own at least 50% uh, or more, is considered a 
uh, prohibited transaction from you doing business with that entity. So once again, make sure that you have 49% or less controlling interest in those entities. That would include yourself and a spouse. I know I get the question, well, what if I own 49% and my spouse owns 51%? The rule is, once again, you and your spouse combine or any other disqualified person or family members cannot own more than 49% within that entity in order for you to conduct business with that entity. So the objective here is really to avoid taking any shortcuts and really don't mess with the IRS. I mean, right now they're starved for cash and they're looking to turn over every rock they can to basically find anyone who are considered tax cheats. So one of the things Jeff mentioned earlier, which is really important, this is also part of making sure that you follow the rules to avoid any prohibited transaction, is first of all, establish your self-directed IRA or 401k. Once you set up that account, you're going to be assigned what's called a legal vesting, which will basically consist of your name and the account number. It will be an actual legal vesting, which will be transferred onto the operating agreement or the subscription agreement for the LLC, whichever one you're going to be setting up for either a multi-member or single-member LLC. Jeff will basically enter that information into the documents, get everything taken care of, send it over to us, and which at that point you will complete some additional documentation, and we will move forward in terms of funding the LLC. Uh, once you establish your account, it's kind of one of those situations, depending on the custodian, as to whether do you have to fund the account right away in order to, to fund the LLC. Some may require funding, some may not. Some may require that you pay all of the setup costs for the LLC out of the IRA, pulls up out of your pocket. Some will give you the option to either or. We give the option to give you uh, for you to set up the LLC for, uh, by paying out of pocket or paying directly from your actual retirement account. But the main objective is definitely set the account up first. Fund the account if necessary. And usually you want to fund the account if you know that there's a pending transaction because there could be holes on the account depending on how the funds are received, whether it be transfer, rollover, contribution. If those funds are received by a check, of course, we're going to put a five to seven business day hold on that check. So timing is going to be critical or really going to be determinant as to whether you're going to fund the account uh, while you're waiting for the LLC to be set up. You're going to contact an LLC attorney to establish the LLC, provide all the, uh, the, the required legal vesting, which once your account is set up immediately, whether you fund the account or not, you'll receive an IRA or 401k legal vesting in which you will pass that information on to someone like Jeff in which you'll move forward with beginning to set up the LLC. Now, once the document is complete, he's going to forward that information over to you. He's going to forward us what we need. Um, in terms of to move forward in terms of funding the account. Now prior to funding the account, meaning us transferring the funds over to the LLC, you're going to have to go establish an account with the bank of your choosing. Uh, you definitely want to make sure that uh, whoever you set the account up with maybe will allow you, if they require funds right away, what you're going to be required to do is for us to oppose to wire the funds into the account. We're going to maybe have to cut you a check because some banks will not allow you to open up the account with a zero balance and you're definitely prohibited from using personal funds in terms of opening that account. That would be the first mistake you could ever make is to assume that, well, no one's looking. I can open up the account uh, with personal funds. In an audit, the first thing they're going to do is if they look at the LLC, was how was the, the account funded? Was it IRA funds or 401k funds to fund the, uh, the bank account for the LLC? That would be the first mistake. If they see that personal funds were used, automatically you've committed a prohibited transaction from that date forward. So once the account is established, meaning the LLC, the bank account is established, we will go ahead and fund the uh, monies over to the LLC. And at that point, as the managing member, you pretty much conduct all your transactions. Just make sure you follow all the rules. If you have any questions, you definitely want to consult with myself as it relates to the structure to make sure it's a compliant transaction in accordance to IRS Code 4975. But you also want to make sure, because remember, I can't give you any tax advice. You want to make sure that you're consulting with your tax professional. Even if your tax professional is can't get back to you right away, it's worth you waiting until they can back, get back to you because we're not going to take the responsibility of attempting to give you advice, even though a lot of questions may come up that I can't answer. There's also variables that may make your situation a little different based on an answer that I may have given to someone else based on a conversation I have with their tax professional. So there's a lot of variables that that answer may be applicable to that particular transaction, but maybe not to yours as the reason why you want to talk to your tax professional that way he or she can look at your entire picture to give you the best advice to make sure that you have a compliant transaction. So once that's set up, you're ready to start making your investments.
So here's a flow chart to kind of give you an idea what the process will look like in terms of opening the account, funding the account, uh, funding the account, and then funding the investment. In this case, funding the investment would be consisting of funding the LLC, in which the LLC would then go out and actually partake in uh, acquiring the asset. In this case, maybe real estate, precious metals, whatever you choose uh, to use that LLC as the uh, should I say the uh, conduit for your IRA or 401k to acquire assets. Once the uh, IRA or should I say the LLC starts to acquire the assets, the actual vesting of that asset will be held in the name of the LLC. Whatever the name of the LLC that you choose will be the vested owner of that asset held within the LLC. The only time the legal vesting would apply um, in terms of any asset you would hold is if you're purchasing assets directly from the IRA. Now some say, well, can I actually purchase directly from my IRA as well as from the LLC? And the answer is yes. I actually have some who actually will take that method or that approach for a form of asset protection. Uh, for whatever reason, they want to segregate a piece of property in an LLC, so they'll leave enough money in that LLC to acquire it, to maintain it, and to take care of their property. But in addition, they maybe want to acquire another property to where they're going to acquire their property directly out of the IRA, in which the vested owner of that property would be the actual IRA and not the LLC. Once again, the LLC is owned by the IRA, so you do have the option to basically purchase directly or indirectly through the IRA or the LLC. So what I'm going to do at this point here, um, here's in summary, and LLC is not required to invest in real estate. It's just something that uh, comes up a lot. And a lot of times if you hear someone or someone steering you that you're required to invest, uh, in order to invest in real estate, you have to set up an LLC. You may want to ask yourself, who's behind that structure? Usually in most cases there's an attorney who's maybe working with the custodian to where someone's getting a kickback. Uh, that's basically steering you to set up an IRA as well as an, a checkbook control LLC. That is just usually, as Jeffrey mentioned earlier, is a, uh, a feature that can be added to an IRA or 401k that it gives you a little more flexibility, a checkbook control as well as asset protection, but it is not required in order to acquire any asset that you set up an LLC. An IRA 401k can own an LLC, so it's not just an IRA, it's a 401k and all the different plan types that we offer, whether it be a Roth IRA, SIP IRA, simple IRA, all the different types of plans that you would hear or be knowledgeable about in terms of your traditional custodians, we offer those same plan types that can be self-directed and owned by and can actually uh, have an interest or own an LLC. No self-dealing allowed. Once again, you have to follow the same rules as though we're conducting the transactions on the behalf of the account. Uh, as the manager, you follow those same rules. An IRA LLC manager must follow the same rules as custodian relative to IRS Code 4975. Be sure to keep accurate account records for the LLC. Annual fair market values are still required for assets held within the LLC. So be careful in terms of what you invest in. I mean, it's great to be able to make the investments, but all investments require a fair market valuation. You have to have the ability to be able to obtain a fair market valuation from a third party in order to provide that information to us for us to do our IRS reporting at the end of the year. So pretty much these are the rules to follow. It's not that detail or that complicated as some may describe. Uh, you have some who are pro. IRA owned LLC, some who are against it. So a lot of times you want to make sure if you're getting advice is to make sure you're getting actual legal advice and not someone's personal opinion because this is a permissible and legal structure to use your IRA or 401k to conduct transactions. Uh, so this is my contact information if you have any questions. So we're going to go ahead and open this up for uh, questions and answers. And as I mentioned earlier, we already have a series of questions uh, that has come in. So, Jeff, if you're ready, we'll go ahead and get started on some of the questions. I, I am ready to go, so let's let's get to those questions. Okay. So the first question, I think you answered this earlier, is an IRA required to purchase real estate with an IRA 401k? And we just answered that question. Actually, it's not required. Um, can you use an existing LLC in conjunction with an IRA or 401k? And I'll go ahead and let you answer that question, Jeff. Yeah, somebody uh, came to me once, uh, and they had already set up their um, LLC, and said, can I use it? And uh, the, generally the answer is no. Uh, and the reason for that is, as Lamar just explained, technically what you're doing is when you fund an existing LLC, you are now getting engaged in a transaction between your plan and an existing entity. Um, you, must, you should start with a brand new uh, LLC when you're funding it 
as uh, you can start off with that. If you're investing in an existing LLC, it's going to look as if you're now investing with yourself, which would be a prohibited transaction. And that is correct. And the rule, as Jeff just mentioned, is the fact that that LLC was more than likely set up under your name personally or a spouse of some other disqualified person makes it a prohibited transaction because, once again, IRS Code 4975 prohibits you from doing business involving any asset that you had prior interest or existing interest in prior to the setup of that LLC. So you usually want to make sure whatever entity or investment you're going to be making is to make sure that that asset or entity exists after the formation of the self-directed IRA or 401k. And I'm, can I just add one thing to that? Sure. And that was uh, in these template, these uh, internet template uh, uh, programs or a couple of companies that are very famous for, for setting up LLCs. Um, what they do is the operating agreement that they use actually not only do they set it up but they go and record it and they take care of all the steps that you need the stuff that I do for my clients but they do it in advance they now have created a paper trail that the IRS would have access to that would show proof positive of a prohibited transaction so Good point. Um, Good it's point. worse it's worse than just having it there I, I, want, I can mention that if you're in a real hurry, I have a system. I can set up an LLC within 20, inside of 24 hours, have it up and running for you. Um, but, um, you know, you create a paper trail when you use these Internet companies, and with the improper operating agreement, uh, you've just sunk your entire IRA. Well, another good point is, uh, yes, Jeff is pretty much laying everything out to you. One of the things I hear a lot is, well, I can get this done relatively cheap. The old saying is you get what you pay for, and one of the things I like about Jeff, and in in, like I said, it's no accident we've worked together over the last five years to conduct several presentations, both live or via webinar, is that Jeff also provides consultation. So you definitely want to seek someone who's going to provide the service that you can also pay for consultation as you go along, because that's going to be critical moving forward. Some would seem to think that they will save money by avoiding consultation, but that money they may pay for consultation will be a lot less than what it would cost them in the event of a prohibited transaction. That's true. Go ahead. Next question here. Can private funds and self-directed funds be used in partnership with an IRA-owned LLC? So in other words, can they partner using their personal funds and self-directed funds? And if you want, I can answer that question. At least start off answering that question. Why don't you go ahead? Well, depending on the custodian, but for the most part, it's kind of a gray area. But uh, the rule is, once again, as long as the asset that's being acquired is not owned by yourself or by the LLC or the IRA, it's a permissible transaction. And the way it's supposed to work is, for example, using real estate, uh, you can combine monies into a um, self-directed fund as well as uh, fund that account monies into the actual IRA-owned LLC. In this case, it would be more likely a multi-member LLC. The rule is make sure that when funding that LLC where it's involving personal funds owned by the account holder in conjunction with the self-directed funds, that the funding is simultaneous. It has to happen the same day. In the event that the funding takes place a day apart, makes it a prohibited transaction because, once again, going back to the first question, uh, if I personally was to fund, my LLC, fund the LLC and then follow up the day after with the IRA, it also it may give the appearance to the, IRA, uh, the IRS that I'm actually Fund, making an investment into something that I already have an interest in, so or vice versa. So you definitely want to make sure that that funding happens the same day to make sure that the transaction remains compliant. Yeah, and I'll only add to it is that although in theory it is possible to combine your personal money with your IRA into an LLC um, and you're doing it at the same time, down the road if uh, you run into a problem where you need to add more funds into the system, you must do so in exactly the same percentage as you originally funded that LLC. And sometimes that can create a problem for you. It's part of what I go through whenever I'm uh, helping someone set up one of these things. I walk through the entire transaction so that we can anticipate problems that can come up. And you, for example, if you're locked in, you have no more money way to increase contributions to your IRA, um, then you cannot add any more 
of your cash because then it would be a disproportionate uh, transaction that will create a prohibited transaction. And that's all. And what he just mentioned is important because that's even applicable if you're purchasing an asset uh, outside of an LLC using the IRA. Many times you're partnering uh, funds with a disqualified person. The percentage of ownership is determined by which each party contributes towards the acquisition of the asset. So if it's an LLC, the percentage of ownership is going to be determined by what the initial funding of the LLC would be, and it has to remain as such throughout the relationship within that LLC. So as Jeff mentioned any subsequent funding has to be in equal parts relative to the percentage of ownership held within that LLC. So the next question here, what are some examples of transactions where an LLC would be required? Well, I think the first one that we touched on is um, where you are combining uh, IRS between disqualified persons. The IRS considers the assets owned by the LLC differently than the um, uh, plans themselves. And you know you might have a problem if uh, two disqualified persons were trying to invest in the same transaction. But if you simultaneously set up an LLC with those, then you can go forward. For example, you can your son and your uh, can you can use his IRA and your IRA. Uh, combining them on another property can create some problems on a deed. It's, it's technically possible, but if you put it into an LLC, it, it makes it a lot easier. Uh, that's one example I can think of off the bat. Okay. And the other one would be um, that comes to mind is that um, in the event that, see, more examples, trans okay, well, for example, not, I have clients who are looking to purchase at auctions. I don't care how good a custodian or administrator is, no custodian or administrator can turn around the funding of a transaction within 24 hours. So you have cert uh, certain time-sensitive transactions that require some form of checkbook control because, as I mentioned, no custodian or administrator can turn around a transaction within 24 hours because all transactions have to go through compliance review. And depending on the size of the organization and the value of a transaction on a daily basis, uh, a lot of times compliance uh, review cannot take place the same day. So in that case, you definitely want to consider if there's something you're going to be a uh, transaction you're going to be doing on a regular basis where you're going to be buying, where funding is required within one or two business days, you definitely want to look into an IRA-owned LLC uh, to facilitate that type of transaction. Right. And that's the oil and gas lease example I brought up because this, as soon as they spot an oil oppor uh, drilling opportunity, uh, that opportunity goes out and they need an answer very, very quickly. Um, and uh, you know the, the complicated technology behind those things would drive even the best um, uh, self-directed IRA administrator nuts trying to r read through and, and look for the compliance documents. Um, so there's, there are advantages and sometimes with the speed of the transaction being the most singularly most advantageous uh, use of the LLC. Right. So the next question here, what are some examples where the LLC would be needed for asset protection? Let me, let me talk about that. The IRA, most people probably are not aware of the fact that the IRA itself is a form of asset protection. And um, you, uh, under current uh, laws, you know, it's very difficult for a uh, plaintiff or a creditor to go after your IRA, the money that's in your IRA. A very good reason to have an IRA to start with because if you have those funds in there, it cannot be uh, attacked by creditors and, uh, and the like. There is more and more pressure, however, being brought on uh, individuals uh, who have messed up or are subject to liabilities for things for uh, the uh, attorneys to go after the pension plan if they can prove there's some form of uh, liability for them. And uh, the LLC is also a form of asset protection. So having the IRA inside the LLC adds a layer of protection to it. Um, I like the fact that it's a more formal arrangement, um, the fact that it has an operating agreement, a management structure, and the like. And the LLC is a traditional uh, asset protection vehicle. As I mentioned, it gives you the same asset protection as a corporation. So it's sort of an extra layer, but the IRA itself is uh, most often protected from attack. Good point, good point. 
Next question here is, can you transfer assets acquired by a self-directed IRA or 401k into an IRA-owned LLC at a later time and date? You want to take that one, Jeff? Uh, okay, read that first part again. Can you transfer assets acquired by a self-directed IRA into an IRA-owned LLC later? Uh, it is possible to do that. It's the the uh, nature of the uh, the ownership of the asset in a IRA is remains the same, and as long as you don't create a prohibited transaction, uh, the form of ownership uh, is simply changed um, in the form of the uh, the IRA is then put in there into an LLC. It's, it can be done. It requires some special uh, paperwork, but as long as the percentage interests don't change, uh, it, it should be possible to do that. And to add to that, because there's a common transaction that comes up for those who are led to believe, um, usually the question comes up, as I mentioned earlier, that they're required to uh, set up an LLC to acquire real estate. And what I usually tell clients is that um, it's probably the best way to go is to acquire the real estate and um, if you feel that you're going to have the amount of volume that's going to warrant the account of the setup of the LLC as well as the maintaining of the LLC on an annual basis, then you can go ahead and move forward. But you also have the option at a later time and date to uh, set up that LLC. And all we require at AccuPlan is that you complete a grant deed. You're going to grant deed the property from the name of the IRA vesting into the vesting of the LLC. Uh, it's kind of a tedious process uh, if you do it on your own, but what I usually recommend, which pretty much goes pretty seamlessly, is that if you were to consult with a uh, title escrow agent, they, they provide that service in terms of completing and filing and recording the grant deed to make the transfer. So once we receive, um, well, once this, uh, this process is taken uh, taken into a task, is that what will happen is the new grant deed will be sent over to the member of the LLC or the managing member of the LLC in which at that point, the uh, property is now owned by the LLC and no longer owned by the IRA. Or if it's the inverse, if you want to transfer the property, uh, I see this a lot where someone's facing litigation uh, as it relates to the LLC, but they want to move that property or properties out of the LLC. They'll grant deed the properties out of the LLC back into the IRA. So those are some of the some of the tricks of the trade I've actually seen over the years. But that is something that is possible. All right. The next question is, can you describe examples of how personal funds from a disqualified person or other IRAs in private capital would be set up, and what are the prohibited transaction rules? And I think that was kind of alluding to the first question in terms of uh, partnering private funds along with um, IRA funds. And the main objective is to make sure that it is a simultaneous funding, meaning that the funding into that uh, LLC has to happen the same day. Any subsequent funding has to be in equal percentages relative to the ownership within the um, the LLC. Right. Let's see. Another question is, can you describe examples of how personal funds... Okay, I just actually read that one there. So the next one is uh, subsequent funding, which I think I just kind of answered that question there on, in the last question. Cost to set up an LLC and ongoing fees. You want to answer that one, Jeff? Yeah. The, um, uh, you can talk, contact me for discussing how much it costs to set up the, the LLC. There's a number of steps you need to be aware of no matter what you do. First of all, you have to research the name, and you have to make sure that it's available. Uh, you have to sometimes reserve that name if you've got a really good one, and you then have to pay the registration fee. Uh, the, uh, these fees in my, are all included in my package that I do for uh, a single member LLC. That's one IRA account um, is $2,500, and that includes my legal advice, and I give you, uh, you know, approximately two hours of, of legal consultation over the course of time and uh, in helping people get set up. I find that that's the average amount of time it takes people to answer their questions and sometimes we get part of the actual real estate transaction done with that in that time frame. Um, the uh, s processing and setting up the special operating agreement, I custom tailor it to your situation um, and uh, so making sure it isn't one. I always get annoyed when I have people come to me that got a internet template, all you get, you pay all the same amount of money, and they send you a document that's got all these blank spaces that you're supposed to fill in. Um, the uh, annual fees, uh, $800 to the state of California uh, for the annual tax, and then every two years, California charges you $20 to file a statement of information. It's actually very simple and straightforward. 
A single member LLC, that's a LLC with one IRA account in it, is considered a disregarded entity for federal tax purposes. So that's good news. And we understand that there, we're looking into this possibility that there may be an exemption available for some LLCs from the $800 tax. Uh, I don't do that, but uh, we have someone who is looking into finding out if we can qualify some of these LLCs for an exemption from the $800 tax. Yeah, so actually, and to add to that, as a, a CPA that I've been working with here in the Sacramento area for the last five years, um, she's working, has actually completed a few uh, of these exemptions. So if you have any questions or you're looking to set up an LLC and right now you're kind of on the fence because of the $800 a year fee, give me a call and I'll be happy to pass along that information of that CPA to put you in contact with her uh, for her to assist you with that. Um, if, that's, once again, that's something that's holding you back in terms of setting up an LLC in the state of California. Okay. okay. One other question here, and I think we should be able to wrap it up after this here, is adding more funds to an LLC, how do you do it? Um, it's kind of same with the IRA. Um, so I make the mistake of assuming that, well, okay, all of my funds are already in the LLC. I need to add additional funds. I can just add monies directly into the bank account of the LLC. Prohibited transaction off the start. What you have to do is, whether it be a transfer, rollover, or contribution, all funds must be directed into your IRA or 401k, and then those funds transferred into the uh, bank account for the LLC. You cannot add additional cash out of pocket or from any other source into the IRA or own LLC bank account. That would be a, a considered prohibited transaction. Keep in mind, once if there's ever an audit, the IRS wants to be able to look at everything in that bank account as far as incoming and outgoing funds and be able to match that information up with our records showing that all funds coming into that account derive from the IRA or from the 401k. A red flag will automatically be raised the minute they see a transaction or any entry on your books showing that funds came into your, to the account and it cannot be matched up as coming from the IRA or from the 401k. So you definitely want to make sure that that's the route that you take in terms of adding additional funds. Uh, what's really important also is that if you're acquiring properties or any asset directly from the IRA or through an LLC is to make sure after you acquire the asset that you have enough money in the IRA-owned LLC or the IRA to maintain the asset. And that kind of brings me to the reason this question more likely comes up is that we call cash shortages. What is the remedy to a cash shortage? And the remedy is to add additional funds to the self-directed account and then transfer those funds to the LLC is how do you remedy a cash shortage, provided that you have the ability to make a contribution up to that maximum amount of the retirement plan that you have set up or transfer or rollover funds from another retirement account into the, to the account. Um, another option would be uh, leveraging. You have the ability, provided you can find a bank that will uh, grant a loan against the assets within the IRA or the IRA-owned LLC, you can obtain cash that way. But part of your due diligence should be making sure that for the first year, at least the first 12 months, that you have enough money in the account to maintain that asset or have access to monies from another retirement account to transfer rollover or to make a contribution to avoid or remedy any possible cash shortages to put you in a situation to where you uh, cannot maintain that asset because once again using personal funds is prohibited. So uh, Jeff, do you have anything else to add to that? No, I, I think that the just the only caution is on the reverse part. Uh, never write a check to yourself out of your LLC. When you're ready to take a distribution, take it. Take Good the point. funds back, back to the administrator. Take it back to AccuPlan because they know how to do this. They're also required to report it, and you take your distributions uh, from from them. And uh, that'll keep it clean and create a very, very good record for any audits that the IRS may conduct. That is a good point. And lastly, and he mentioned uh, required minimum distribution or any distributions. If you are close to the age of 70 and a half, you want to also make sure whether you own uh, properties directly in your IRA or through the LLC is that you have enough cash 
in your IRA, not your LLC, but your IRA, because remember your distributions or required minimum distributions must come from the IRA. So you want to make sure that those accumulated rents or whatever cash you have, that you have enough money set aside each year to take care of those required minimum distributions. And that's where you definitely want to sit down with your CPA if you're close to the age of 70 and a half and have a really in-depth discussion as to whether you should be acquiring certain assets. Is it Are you going to have enough cash to take care of those required minimum distributions? Because what, what could and will happen is if those required minimum distributions come and you're not taking them, uh, the IRS pretty much will force you to sell those assets to basically pay the taxes that is due at the age of 70 and a half. So just keep that in mind. So with that being said, that should conclude our presentation. If you guys have any questions, um, my contact information slide is still up here. And Jeffrey, if you want to go ahead and give them your contact information, uh, you can go ahead and give them that again. But in addition to uh, us giving you the contact information, this webinar has been recorded. And within the next two days, we'll go ahead and get you out the playback link in which you can play back at your leisure as well as pass along to others who could not make it to today's uh, webinar. So with that being said, I'd like to thank everyone for attending. And Jeff? Go ahead and take it away. Okay. I just, uh, again, uh, contact me, Jeff at JeffreyHair.com, J-E-F-F-R-E-Y-H-A-R-E.com. And JeffreyHair.com is a website you can go to. I usually post some blogs about uh, investment-related issues. I wish you all good luck with your investing, and uh, definitely get a hold of Lamar. He's one of the uh, best people in the world that I know that gets back to his uh, clients and does a great job with them. Um, so good luck to you all, and be careful, and thank you for participating in this webinar. And thanks a lot, Jeff.